Miss Nazareth! Ooh, who is Nazareth? Oh, I'll tell you who Nazareth. She's the feisty Latina who's ready to burn the city down. Whenever Nazareth is around, it's always a stage. Nazareth is very in your face and matter of fact, and she's fierce. My name is Anthony, also known as Nazareth. I am a paralegal by day, and by night I'm a drag queen. I'm originally from Yoakum, Texas, a real country. I always also say I'm from New York because that's where my drag started, so that was the birth of Nazareth. I started doing drag because I needed, uh, I needed something, and I, I needed, I needed her. My drag originally stemmed from the fact that I was suffering from really bad depression, and uh, I was, I was struggling with my identity. I think being a queer kid and growing up in a, a, a religious uh, Christian household, uh, it can be difficult. And, I also lost my dad in my teen years. I think he was someone that was always really accepting and loving. And I distinctively remember him saying, if my child came out as gay, I would love them no matter what. In fact, I would love them even more because I know they would need it. I think he knew that I was queer and, and struggling and he wanted to reassure me. My mom is not accepting of it at all. and does not address it. She calls it my funny stuff. And, and my sisters aren't supportive of it, of, of it at all. His family doesn't support him because they're very religious. And they are kind of one-track minded and they don't approve of it. It affects him tremendously. It's his family, his sisters. He doesn't talk to them, so I know it hurts. I was such a mama's boy. And I hate to get so emotional about it, but like her and I, like we were movie buddies. We were um, uh, thrifting buddies. We'd go antiquing all the time. We'd go shopping together all the time. I'd help pick out her clothes. Um, she knew I was, you know, this queer person. It's. I think she just struggled with it and never wanted to accept it. The minute I came out, like our relationship shifted. I wrote her a letter and I gave her this book called God and the Gay Christian because I wanted to let her know like I can be Christian and I can still be gay. And she's like, you're not gonna be this way. Essentially, I was kind of forced back into the closet because she gave me an ultimatum of either you're gonna be this way and you're gonna move to New York and I'm not gonna support you or you're not gonna be this way. I was in the closet for another two years for her. I was, of course, out to my friends, and I was out to, in New York. I was living my life there, but unfortunately, I was having to live two separate lives. I was living a life as out and proud Anthony there and living as someone my mom wanted me to be back in Texas. When I first started drag in New York, a lot of it was like really dark and it was really honestly like outrageous and wild. And a lot of it had to do with one, I was experimenting, but two, I was really dealing with a lot of trauma. My drag has evolved and changed quite a bit and I don't necessarily need it to address trauma. But when I first started drag, I needed it. Drag truly, saved my life. I, I just moved from that small town here in Texas to New York City and I just turned 18 the month before. So I was still extremely naive. I was still like struggling with who I was as a person. I, I was just really lost and I didn't have any confidence. I began to spiral. Nazareth was born from kind of that trauma. That's, that's why I'm, my name is Nazareth. It's extremely religious. I'm taking something that um, um, brought a lot of pain and suffering, but turning that into something really 
powerful and positive on a stage. Mm. Being on stage is the moment where I can get out a lot of those emotions. I honestly think that he is hurt and he performs based off of that hurt and he's able to get it out through the performance. Nazareth is... It's, it's, I should know, right? I should know who Nazareth is. Nazareth is a uh, ethereal, um, uh, I always say like a fallen like angel and a fierce performer, uh, highly influenced by religion. It's like a punch in the face almost to um, my family a little bit. It's a little bit of me like, haha, you so badly wanted to force this religion on me and, and becoming straight for God. And instead, I become a drag queen. Nazareth was just a part of his um, accepting that um, religion and the ties that that religious religion has with his family um, he, he coming more to terms with those things and and really evolving past it so Naz Nazareth was was I think that that evolution in in not only his drag but also in his personal life Nazareth has, has taught me a lot more than even I realize sometimes and and it, honestly it is it is She's allowed me to like forgive as well. She is um, uh, very important to me. And, uh, um, and I always reference Nazareth as like another person. Obviously it's, it's, it's a part of me, but um, uh, you know, the minute I'm on that stage, it's like a switch. Um, because I think it's a very different personality of like what Anthony gives off, uh, what I give off. Um, uh, it's still a part of my personality, but I don't necessarily show that on a daily basis. Uh, so it's always fun to access that part of, of who I am. Becoming that is, is a really good feeling. Uh, it's, it's funny because there are similarities and there are like really differences for being the same person. Um, you'd think maybe it, they were, there were all similarities, but there really aren't. Um, uh, Nazareth is, and Anthony are very dedicated. Um, they are both fiery. They bring that passion to everything that they do. Um, I think the main difference would be that, um, uh, Nazareth is way more confident than Anthony. What I think the duality of Anthony and Nazareth says about him, them, um, is that Anthony has, uh, as an individual, all of this potential, um, all of this star power, all of this opportunity to evolve for growth, um, to be bigger than, than really any one person usually is. And Nazareth is the culmination of that. Nazareth isn't just a, a wig and a set of heels. Nazareth is, is his ultimate potential. I, I love the fact that he can express himself in drag and be him truly because he, I feel like he was robbed of that as a child. I would not be here today if it wasn't for drag. Um, and it is a place where I can express my femininity and be celebrated. Drag is a movement. Drag to the queer community is a level of expression. It's safety, it's art. You watch some people fucking do this <laughs> and you pay us for it, isn't that great? Don't I have the coolest fucking job in the world? 
Uh, one of the reasons why I was so drawn to Nazareth was she had that grit, she had that energy, she had that spark in her eyes where she was just ready to light the room up. Becoming Nazareth is really religious. <laughs> Doing my makeup is, is obviously a really big part of um, becoming Nazareth. It's like a switch. It's always, it's always one thing. Drag queens are like, oh, what's, what's the one thing that like, immediately you're like, okay, I've become, you know, this persona. And it's always the brows for me. Like, I love brows. Like, I'm a big brow person. And um, the minute I like draw the exact kind of brow that I want that day, I'm like, I'm like, okay. And, uh, start feeling myself <laughs> just staring in the mirror at myself i'm like oh i'm so beautiful anthony never had that confidence growing up i typically give myself at least four hours to get ready i know it sounds insane to to set aside four hours of your day to um do makeup but i'm truly reconstructing my entire face i like to take my time i'm such a perfectionist especially again with the brows i'm constantly going back in touching up so that all ends up taking time and then next thing you know it's like that four hours has passed and i'm like rushing out the door still pulling up my tights my rock is uh, my partner daniel he helps me out so much he is there with me every step of the way um and uh i couldn't do this without him i truly would not be the queen i am today without my uh my team and my, my friends and my partner. I don't think I'd be where I am. I'm really grateful for that. I wouldn't be, I don't think I'd be as successful because it truly does take a community. I don't know if I would have done anything differently what I, from what, knowing what I know now. Um, every moment in my drag career or just life in general um, led me to where I am today. I might have not shaved my head when I was um, first doing drag. <laughs> I have a few goals in drag, but I think um, I think the most common one is to get on Drag Race. I think it's a really good platform, and I can go off of that, and it'll really open up a lot of doors for me. But at the end of the day, like I don't do drag for Drag Race. I do drag for me. There's so much power in femininity and I have never felt more myself and stronger uh, than I do now. So I'm really thankful for Nazareth. Nazareth um, as a performer is just, is obviously, you know, I'm, I'm partial, but Nazareth is an exceptional performer. Um, I, I think Nazareth has like really big things ahead of her. Um, the amount of growth that I've seen over the last eight months, eight to ten months, and the trajectory that I've seen her on. Um, it, it would not surprise me if, if she applied for, for RuPaul's Drag Race and got on within one or two years of applying for it. But Nazareth, for me, is someone who's going to change the world. Otherwise, I'll do this for a little bit, so it's cool. 